Hey guys, it's Jana, and today we are making Thanksgiving dinner. I am so excited. I love Thanksgiving dinner. It is so delicious. So I wanted to show you all of my recipes. It's pretty much homemade, I guess semi-homemade as it would be. So I like laying out all of my recipes and grabbing all of my ingredients and setting them all out so I can just boom, 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 get it done while the turkey is going. So last night I went ahead and got the turkey all marinated and everything. So let me show you all the ingredients I use for that. I actually use this recipe from a long, long time ago. I probably got it out of a newspaper, I don't know, like 10, 15 years ago, really. And anyway, I've been using it. It's really, really good. It keeps the turkey nice and moist. This is just the recipe that I've always used. Well, except for a few years ago, I tried a new recipe. If you missed that video, I will link that down below. You can check that out. So I also like to line up everything that I need to do in order. So obviously before we start making the turkey, we gotta make the stuffing. So we're gonna do that first, and then things that need to be cold, like the pie or the cranberry sauce and all of that, you know, just do it in order and make your life a little bit easier. So I hope you enjoy our Thanksgiving dinner recipes. Go ahead and hit subscribe, thumbs up, check all the links down below. Be sure to share this video with all of your friends. Let's make Thanksgiving dinner today. I like using chicken broth with my stuffing instead of water because it just adds that extra bit of flavor. And I got Kerrygold, the good butter. I actually have a story about why I use stovetop because I had a friend who made her own homemade stuffing and it was so delicious, but guess what? It was a lot of work and it tasted just like stovetop. So I just stick with stovetop. So I got my turkey out from last night and I'm just gonna transfer it into a new bag. It is kind of nice because those oven bags come with two. So it's just perfect. And we're just gonna baste a little bit of this guy and put the stuffing in there. I also use my roaster instead of my oven and there's an actual good reason for that because you're gonna need your oven. You need your oven space. You can't just have that turkey taking up all the space in there. So we're gonna set this to 325 for whatever pounds you get. Just find your time on the package. We also like making deviled eggs, so I'm gonna get those all boiled up so they can cool off in the fridge. And I got my pie crust here. So this is obviously not homemade, but it makes it a lot easier. So we're just gonna press it into our pie pan. And we're gonna do a little egg wash on it so that it gets a good crust so the pie filling doesn't get it all soggy. So for the pie, we need one can of pumpkin puree, one can of condensed milk, two eggs, and some pumpkin pie spice. Very simple. So just throw that all together and mix it on up. crust in the oven according to the directions for whatever kind you get and then we're gonna pour in our pie filling and we're gonna put it in the oven at 425 for 15 minutes and then 350 for another 40 to 45 minutes don't forget to baste your bird I like cutting a little hole in the bag so I can get my baster in there and then put all the nice juices all over this baby I got about a 13 pound turkey this year since it was just the four of us, so it worked out really nice. We're making our own cranberry sauce. We need cranberries, honey, orange juice, and some cinnamon, and a little bit of sugar. We're just gonna throw this in the Instapot, actually, so that 
again we can keep our stove and our oven clear I love my sliding measuring cup this thing is so awesome with baking for like honey and peanut butter and any of those sticky things that are just so hard to get out of measuring cups so this is actually a new recipe for me I have not made my own cranberry sauce especially in the instapot because that's actually kind of new <laughs> But we're gonna set this at pressure cook for eight minutes and we're gonna let it slowly release itself. So now I'm just kind of mixing it up and I wanna squish my cranberries. I don't like it to be too chunky, but you don't have to if you like it chunky monkey, that's fine. So this actually did come out a little bit runnier than I was hoping. It's supposed to thicken up as it cools, but it didn't totally. So I think maybe next time I might add some cornstarch to get it to thicken up a little bit more. And I'm just going to throw this in the fridge and let it cool off. Don't forget to baste again. I like to baste every like 15-20 minutes to get it nice and juicy. Our pie is ready. I'm just gonna stick a knife in here just to make sure, and as long as your knife comes out clean, then you are ready. We're making our own buns this year, so we need some milk, flour, some yeast, honey, sugar, and some butter, and a little bit of salt. One cup of milk and heat it up in the microwave to about 100 degrees, and so I just did 30 seconds. gonna throw our yeast in here cover it up and let it bubble up for you while we're waiting on the yeast to activate let's get some dishes done the green bean casserole I like putting asparagus in there too it gives it a good flavor but I don't know if you know this trick or not but if you grab the asparagus and just snap it where it snaps that is exactly where it is ripe so then you just break up the rest of them now I got fresh green beans here so we're just gonna snip the ends and break them up into good sized pieces off all your veggies and we're gonna throw them here in my steamer pot I love this thing I don't even know where I got it. I've had it for years we're not gonna steam the vegetables for very long because I like them to be a little bit crisper and plus they will be absorbing some of the yummy goodness that we put in it so I don't want them to be all soggy and while that's going we're gonna baste again looks like my yeast is all bubbly so we're going to complete our buns just combine all of your ingredients and throw it in your mixer with the hook attachment and let the mixer do its job 
I'll link all the tools that I use down below so you can check them out and get one for yourself. a little bit low so the flower doesn't go flying everywhere but we're gonna work our way up to medium speed You'll know your dough's ready when it pretty much cleans the bowl off for you. Okay, that didn't take very long. I'm just gonna poke these guys here and see how tender they are. And yeah, that's about right. Once they're that nice bright green. work your dough a little bit on your countertop and we're going to fold it into a nice rectangle so we can cut this into 12 pieces. Roll up into little balls. Try to keep them around the same size so I'm like picking bits off or putting extra bits on to make them the same size so they all bake evenly. actually a new recipe for me this year. I'm really excited because we're actually going to bake them in the crock pot. Again, leaving our oven ready for anything that I need to put in there. Get some parchment paper and line your crock pot and then throw all your buns in there. Just not touching a little bit because they're going to rise a little bit. set our crock pot on high for 90 minutes. Here's all the goo for the green bean casserole. So I have the two cream of bacons cause we don't do mushrooms. And I got some buttermilk, ranch dip mix, some cheddar cheese, bacon, and these crispy fried onions. We're just gonna mix it all together in this big old bowl and throw it in our casserole dish. <laughs>
I am just prepping this right now, so I'm not gonna put the fried onions on top because I don't want them to get all soggy. So I'm just gonna throw the lid on here and throw it in the fridge until it's time to bake. I do like to clean the edges of my casserole dishes so it makes for kind of easier cleanup without all that thin yuckiness just burning on there. Base the bird. This is my cheesy potato casserole. We're gonna use the bag of hash browns, a bag of shredded cheddar, two cans of cream of chicken, one tub of sour cream, and a little bit of diced green chilies. We're just gonna throw this all together, a little salt and pepper in there, and put it in our casserole dish. buns are looking good so obviously it's not going to get brown on top since it was in the crock pot but we're going to butter the tops and throw this in the oven on broil for about one or two minutes until it gets a little bit goldeny brown on top Now we're gonna put the potato casserole in. That is gonna be for one hour. So while that's going, I'm gonna cook up the sausage. I like putting sausage in my stuffing. Right. While that's going, we're gonna baste the bird. It's looking golden -y brown now, guys. to do more dishes. He just got home so he can start helping out. I'm so excited that he can help. But a lot of it got done anyway. He's gonna make the deviled eggs. He's really good at it. They may not be the most gorgeous things, but they're delicious. I got those fried onions on the green bean casserole because I'm gonna put that in here soon. But with the eggs, he put mustard, mayonnaise, some pesto, and some bacon bits. So super yummy, very flavorful. Yeah. 
I just put the green bean casserole in, so that'll go in for 30 minutes. We left some of the eggs just plain for the kids so they'll actually eat some. And here's my second round of stuffing. I do like to make two packages of stuffing. I have one in the bird and we're gonna make another one, mix it with the sausage and we're gonna mix them all together. Cause the stuffing in the bird obviously is a lot more moist so I like to mix together two to make it kind of even itself out I suppose. Oh look at that turkey, it's a ready. It's always a team effort to get the turkey out, but it looks really, really good. out the stuffing here so I can mix it with my new stuffing and the sausage. a feast. I am so excited. Everything smells amazing, looks amazing, came out just like I thought. I love it. Thanksgiving. Everything looks so amazing. Everything smells amazing. I can't wait to dive in and make a plate. Yeah, that was a long day of cooking, but it's all worth it. So I hope you enjoyed all of these recipes. I will link them and or type them if they're one of my recipes down below and you can give them a try and let me know if you try these recipes this Thanksgiving and yeah, I have been using these recipes for a long time. Some of them were new, some of them were not. Um, but yeah, now we get to feast. So thank you so much for watching. Go ahead and hit subscribe, thumbs up. Check all the links down below. Be sure to check out those videos I picked out just for you. Happy Thanksgiving, and I will see you next time.